Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a couple of differences between OpenTX and EFOS that may catch out people just switching over. So in this video we're going to take a look at five things that may catch out people who have used OpenTX for a while and are taking a look at EFOS. Now of course they're very similar. The uh, main developer of EFOS, Bertrand Songis, was or is one of the main developers for OpenTX2. So there are a lot of similarities, but there are a couple of things that I've picked up that you know seem to catch out a lot of people when they're first moving over. So we're just going to break it down and take a look. So number one, there's no configurator, which means the update process is different. Now. I've done a separate video on how to update, so I'll put a link up in the corner. Go and watch that if you want to know how to update. But yeah, at the moment, there's no alternative to the OpenTX companion that we used to use. I don't actually know if there's something coming, but I sort of hope so, because I found companion very useful. So I'm hoping that something will follow suit. Number two is how you enter bootloader. So one thing that you had on OpenTX was if you plugged in a USB cable, it would ask you if you wanted to use it as an SD card or as a game controller. You don't get that with EFOS. What will happen if you plug a USB in with EFOS is it just becomes a game controller. So I'll plug it in and you can see now we have our X20 joystick. So there you go. You just plug it straight in. You can use it with your flight sims. But what about if you want to do updates or you wanted to access the SD card, for example? Obviously, you can't do it like that. But what you have to do is put it in bootloader mode. So to put it in bootloader mode, obviously, you have your USB unplugged. And all we're going to do is hold down the enter button and just click on uh, the power button. And you can see already we're in bootloader mode. So if I plug in the USB, you'll see now it says USB plugged. So if we now head over to Windows Explorer. So if you go into Windows Explorer, you'll now see that we have two new devices, USB drive, and this one will usually just be called USB drive 2. I've actually renamed my uh, SD card to X20S SD just to save any confusion. It's, it's quite a handy thing to do, especially for the flashing process. You know, which is the SD card? And this one here is obviously the onboard uh, flash memory of the radio. But anyway, that's how you get it into bootloader and how you access the SD card and also how you can do your um, firmware updates. So while we're in Windows Explorer, there's one other thing that people are getting confused about, and that is that sound file locations have changed. So historically with OpenTX, we would have a sounds folder and in there we would have language folders like EN, ES, uh, DE, you know, a folder for your language. So traditionally we have put our sound files in the language folder, but the way the uh, EFOS works is it's your transmitter. You shouldn't need to put the extra files in the language folder because it's the language you speak anyway. The language folders are purely for system sounds which can vary from person to person but your personalized sound files are just that sound files. So if we click on the audio folder, you'll see a load of my custom sound files. So that's it, you just dump them in here. You don't actually put them in EN at all. You just have your system files. Um, and of course, any languages you don't use, you can delete the folders for. So while we're in here, let's just have a quick look at system. And there's two files that we can look at. So we've got hello, which is the power on sound. And I don't actually know if I've got it on here. But there is a file that you can add, which is by.wav, which is if you power the radio down, it will play that file. So we're back on the transmitter now for uh, change number four. And that is how you change the case of text. Now on the OpenTX, you would hold in the enter button and that would flip it from upper to lower case. But if we let's go into edit model, we'll go into the name. The way you change the text is different. If I hold down the enter button, you'll see we now get copy or clear options. So, yeah, we can copy and paste our text. We can also just wipe it uh, clear straight away. So let's return out of that. 
and what I'll do is show you how we can now change the case so this wheel down here has now become very useful and I actually through using ethos discovered that some of it was actually on OpenTX2 so system and display will actually jog uh, the cursor along you have model the model button will change the case from upper to lower and it's really nice it remembers it so if you change from uppercase to lowercase the next one will also be in lowercase it remembers what you've written and finally we can if i go along to the end i'll add something else if you press the page button it will actually delete and of course return returns out like normal well that's how you change case and also how you can edit text differently now that long press on the enter will actually do other things too so um, if we have a look in mixer for example you can actually change how values work and stuff like that so if you hold down enter you can set it to minimum maximum or use a, a source which means you could use a pot to change your expo in this example So if you are having a play, try just long pressing the enter button and you may find that something useful pops up. And finally, change number five is your model setup can now be all over the place. In OpenTX, we had our initial model setup page, which was obviously you'd press hold the model button and then the first page would have a, a long list of different settings on with your receiver and all that you can see on this edit model page it's literally just the control surfaces what type of model it is picture and a name that's pretty much all it is on here to edit everything else we need to return back out so we flight modes were separate of course before but you have things like trims rf system uh, timers they were all on that edit model page before so things have been broken out just to try and separate things and probably make it easier for the touch uh, touchscreen system so obviously the RF system was on the main model setup page before that's broken out and you'll notice that model select is now in the uh, model menu it used to be in 1.0.8 and below on the configuration menu but it's now been moved to the model menu so i hope you guys found this video useful it's five things in ethos that might catch you out if you're coming from OpenTX. if you did please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon because that will help get this video out to more people so they can learn about these things too thank you very much guys fly your models like you stole them i'll see you on the next one